Is electric vehicle battery swap viable? Now, many companies have tried this in the past, and to date, only NEO seems to be successfully implementing a battery swap system. Now, I remember Better Place from more than a decade ago tried this. They were very early, and that was probably part of the reason why they only got about 4,000 cars on the road before the company went bankrupt. Tesla also tried a small pilot program for battery swap and promised a 90-second battery swap, but they also abandoned their plans and focused solely on DC fast charging. Now I'm out here in San Francisco to check out a new startup to see if there's ample evidence that battery swap has a future with electric vehicles. Okay, so the company's name is Ample, and I gotta admit, after playing back that first clip with the whole Ample evidence line, I think it sounds a little bit more corny than I thought it would. In any event, I was invited to attend the public reveal of Ample's second generation battery swap station. Ample has been using its first generation battery swap stations in a pilot program that provides access to 12 stations in California's Bay Area to Uber drivers. And Ample representatives told me that each location completes hundreds of battery swaps every day. Now the company's second generation station improves upon the initial design and is designed to reduce the battery swap time down from 10 minutes to about five. It's also able to service both passenger cars and larger delivery trucks. Now, unlike the initial design, version two is a drive-through setup, which is more user-friendly and safer. Passengers can even exit and enter the vehicle during the battery swapping session. Ample gave us an opportunity to watch a full battery swap session of a Kia Nero EV. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. I recorded it and added a timer below so we can see exactly how long the swap took. Ample's second generation swap station is designed and manufactured at Ample's factory. It's transported to the site in three sections and takes only three days from the start to the station being put into swapping service. Ample told me that the swap stations are three to 10 times less expensive to build and install than a DC fast charging site is, which will allow the company to deliver energy at a cost that is about 20% cheaper than gasoline. However, the real difference in Ample's technology compared to the other battery swap systems in service is its modular battery architecture. Ample says its system makes it so that automakers don't need to redesign their cars to work with Ample's technology. An Ample EV battery is made out of Lego-like battery modules that can accommodate any make, design, or model and can be tailored to fit any driving profile from commuting to ride sharing to last mile delivery, even autonomous vehicles once they arrive. The battery swap process doesn't remove one large pack that can weigh a thousand pounds or more. Instead, individual modules are replaced and customers can select how many they want. For instance, during the week when you're doing short work commutes, you can have a 30 kilowatt hour battery in your car. But on the weekends, when you want to go out into the country, you can have the station swap in more modules and add up to 100 kilowatt hours of battery. Ample representatives told me they've been working in stealth with five different current EV manufacturers. But to date, they've only announced a partnership with Fisker and will be offering a battery swap option on the Ocean SUV in the first quarter of 2024. The company said we'll hear more about other brand partnerships in the coming weeks. Ample's pricing model hasn't been announced, but obviously the vehicle will cost less because you're not buying the battery. Instead, customers will pay a monthly subscription fee that will be based on various factors, 
including the number of modules, the miles driven, and the time of day that you want the swaps performed. Now, personally, I can see this model working for business fleets and car sharing services much clearer than I can for individuals. But I'm going to withhold judgment until I learn more about the company's other partnerships, its pricing, and how quickly it deploys stations. They'll need to install thousands of stations across the country to make the system viable for the general public. So starting off with geofenced areas for car sharing and fleet use is probably the best plan. Next up, I speak with Khaled Hasuna, CEO and founder of Ample. And oh yeah, that promised five minute battery swap demonstration actually took a little longer. Six minutes and 25 seconds by my watch. So I'm here today at Ample with Khaled Hasuna, CEO and founder of Ample. Khaled, tell me a little bit about what you're doing here before we dive into the real details. Absolutely. We're um, building what we call modular battery swap. Effectively, mm -hmm. it's a way for a vehicle to come in, get its battery taken out, replaced with a fully charged battery, and it drive off within a few minutes. And we do it slightly differently, where instead of taking a full battery out, we broke a battery in small pieces, so it's modular and hence you can fit the same battery into different kinds of cars. So you don't have to actually take the full pack out, you're Correct. just taking out modules. Correct. And, and okay, so I, I followed Better Place closely in the beginning, and there were a lot of reasons why it failed, but first of all, they were so early to market, but secondly, Correct. you know, they couldn't, they could only get Renault to agree to do this with the one car, the Fluent CE, and I know they reached out to everybody, but nobody really wanted to be partnered with them. Correct. Do you feel that you're going to get many OEMs to join on with this? I mean, in a way, we already have many OEMs. We're going to be announcing a few more over the next few weeks. And the reason we were successful when maybe Better Place had a tougher time is because when you do pack level swapping, you have to go change the way the car functions in order for you to take the battery out reliably. So you're really going to the automaker and you're saying, I want you to either design a new car or completely change the way your chassis works for this to work. Our approach is not required that. But, but you must require a different battery, right? The, the company isn't going to put in the regular battery pack that they would put in with the EV. That's what do they put in? Just like, or they just leave that, that area blank? Uh, no, we'd, <laughs> we'd build an adapter plate okay. uh, that fits in exactly the same place. Has same footprint, same bolt pattern, same, same connections, same software interface. Okay. So it's like a drop-in. And then that plate is what takes our modules that we know how to take in and out. Okay. Now, um, I, I, We've t I've heard you talk about a lot for car sharing, and I agree, this seems like it would work very well for car sharing. Is this also something that you expect to go into consumer market, regular consumers that just want to buy an EV and, and don't want to pay for the battery or, or want to be able to charge it very quickly? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We just don't think it's a good place to start, but we think it's a good place to end. Okay. So initially use fleets because they'll buy a large number of cars, allows it to create a lot of station in a certain geography very quickly so you can deploy a lot of infrastructure very quickly but once the infrastructure is there a consumer can buy a car that's swappable because it can go anywhere and get a swap right so in a way we're using it more as a trojan horse to create infrastructure they benefit we benefit we create infrastructure and then we go to other use cases right so this is version two of the battery swap station. I saw videos of version one that came out, I think about two or three years ago, years somewhere ago. around there. Yeah, so, um, and that took how long to swap the battery? Uh, so that took t 10 minutes. Okay, and you've uh, cut maybe it a half. Bit over. So this is about five minutes? Yeah, right. oh, so now you're looking at 10 to 12 battery swaps an hour. That's correct. And, and you'll be able to charge the batteries quick enough to replenish that. How do the batteries charge? Are they DC fast charge? We have about 100, on average, about 100 kilowatt connection coming into the okay. station. So we can choose to, if we have one battery, we can direct all of that to it. If we have a number of batteries, we can distribute it. So it gives us a lot of flexibility in choosing how we distribute the amount of power available. Now, the reason we say 100 is because if we need more throughput, we need to swap more cars faster, we just put another station next to it. And part of the advantage is that these stations are not that expensive, so we can actually do that. Yeah, I was, I was over in China and did a Neo battery swap, and they talked a lot about how they can just drop a station. They just need the electrical connection, which you'll also need. The station might be the easy right. part, bringing it in, and it comes in three sections and, uh, and installing yeah. it, but you still need to get the interconnection, which can take months. Correct. Um, but, but it seems like your demand is going 
going to be lower. If you're right. talking about 100 kilowatt demand, that's you know nothing like what the demand is for the typical DC fast charge station, where you know you might have 10 or 12 DC fast chargers that can pull 100 to 350 100%. kilowatts. That's so, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, I mean if you think 100 kilowatt, uh, most buildings in San Francisco will have potentially 100 mm -hmm. kilowatt extra capacity available that we can tie into, similar to this building, right? Yeah. But if you want to install a 350 kilowatt charging, if you want to put two ports, I mean, suddenly kind of becomes a lot more complex for you to find available mm -hmm. capacity very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So currently, the way the, the model is going to be, you're not these aren't going to be available to the regular consumer. This is going to be for fleets and car sharing. As far as installing the stations, where are these going to be installed? You're, I'm sure you already have some contracts. Uh, where, where are the first of these version twos going to be installed? Oh, so um, the first place we're going to deploy them is going to be in Japan. Okay. So that's where we're going first with it. It's going to be in Kyoto. Uh, but that's not to say that it's the only place we're going to deploy. Of course, mm -hmm. as we scale in San Francisco Bay Area, as we go to other cities in the U.S., yeah. or as we scale in Europe beyond Madrid, where we've already deployed, um, as this becomes our main station, we're going to be deploying these stations. But the first one we're going to be putting in Japan. Okay. But you already have version one swap stations Correct. here in the Bay Area. How many stations do you have? We have 12 in the Bay Area, okay. and we already installed the first two in Madrid, okay. in Spain, and we're going to be expanding there to about 10 to 12. Those two you installed are version two or version one? Version one. Version one, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is, is the first it. one you see. This is the first one. When are we going to see these out in the wild? Uh, that's in the end of the year. The so end of the year. we're talking about six, seven months. Okay, so um, I don't know if you've revealed this information yet, but I haven't read it. Do you, have you announced who your battery partner is and maybe what type of chemistry the batteries? Are they LFP? Are they NCM? Yeah. I haven't read that anywhere. So, so we haven't announced partners, although we're working with three different partners. One of the advantage of our technology uh, is that we can actually fit any chemistry into these cars mm -hmm. because our batteries are smarter, so we can use different kind of chemistries. So today, mostly what we use in NMC, it's easy for us to switch to LFP or even a third chemistry if it comes available. Mm -hmm. And we can actually mix and match it. So you can have in the same station multiple chemistries, in the same car multiple chemistries. Okay. All right, and finally, so you see a day where coast-to-coast -coast driving using ample battery swaps every couple hundred miles is going to be viable? Absolutely. Okay, how far off is that going to be? I, I, I don't want to say two years, that's too soon. Okay. <laughs> but I, I think the key is going to be focus on urban centers, mm -hmm. get them equipped, and then connecting becomes easy. I think our challenge today, it's easier for us to deploy fast charging along the highways than it is in the cities because there's not enough power. Mm -hmm. That's not the order you want to follow. Yeah. where most people are in the city. So fix that first and then connect the cities together. Understood. Listen, thank you very much for the interview. I wish you luck. I'll be uh, monitoring your progress because this is something that I think the uh, electric vehicle community is very interested in. There's been a lot of people that have tried battery swap and uh, to date, Neo's really the only one that's kind of making it work. And uh, maybe Ample will be number two and I wish you luck with that. Thanks Absolutely. for the interview. Thank you so much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. So is Ample's innovative approach to battery swap enough to help it be one of the few companies to actually succeed in this field? And is battery swap gonna be part of our electric vehicle future? I don't think we're gonna have answers to those questions for quite a few years, but I do like the approach that Ample has taken and it might be just enough to help them succeed. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.